Hello everyone. Now I'm sure you remember when I demoed this uh, 5101 RAM tester that I built uh, a few months ago. And I got a lot of feedback on it and well it just it fell short in a lot of areas. You know, number one I wanted to change the positioning of the ZIF socket. I wanted to add more switches and I want to be able to test all 28 pins. So here we go. Here's the new one. I debuted this uh, 5101 RAM tester here about three months ago and I got a lot of feedback on it and I personally just wasn't satisfied with the design. It had a lot of issues. For one, it didn't support all 28 pins of the ZIF socket, only had four LED pairs and a single switch to control the testing process. In short, the tester was fine for 5101 RAM chips, but what if you need to test another IC? So. I changed the design and here's the new design. Let's take a look at each of the changes I made and how I was able to increase the capabilities of the tester while using the same number of I.O. bits on the microcontroller. The old design uses eight I.O. bits to control the LEDs. By changing the way the LEDs are controlled, I was able to get the number down to six I.O. bits while adding more LEDs to the circuit. I did this by using this simple circuit setup that allows a single I.O. bit to control two LEDs. When the bit is put into the high impedance state, the LEDs are turned off. When the bit is low, one LED will light up and when the bit is high, the other LED will illuminate. This not only added more LED pairs but also freed up two I.O. bits that were then assigned to the ZIF socket. That took care of two of the pins on the ZIF socket, but I still needed to get the other two connected. And the only thing left was the in-circuit serial programming I.O. bits. Now, typically I like to leave these assigned specifically to the programming port, simply to avoid conflict with other circuitry. And in this case, conflict with any IC that's plugged into the ZIF socket. This additional circuitry can wreak havoc with programming the MCU or running the MCU in debug mode. Even so, to get all 28 pins connected to the MCU, I had to use the programming bits and would just have to deal with the shortfalls of going this route. So with this design, the MCU can't be programmed or debugged with a 28 pin IC plugged into the ZIF socket. So that took care of getting the four pins of the ZIF socket that weren't connected connected to the MCU. The switch control circuitry had to be redesigned to a voltage divider scheme. Each switch when pressed will create a different voltage on the MCU's input. The built-in ADC is then used to read this voltage and convert that to a usable value. That value is then compared against a table to figure out which switch was pressed or if no switch is currently being pressed. Using this method, you can actually add a lot more than just five switches to a single I.O. bit. The last major change was swapping the ZIF socket and the LEDs. Now that I've covered the major changes, let's take a look at this guy in action and test some RAM chips. So to start off, let's test a bad, a known bad 5101 IC. To test the 5101, press the up arrow key and then press the test button. And as you can see, it pretty much tells us right away that this IC is bad. I'm going to put in a known good 5101 and repeat the test. Now, the chip tested good. It may be a little bit difficult to see the green LEDs lit up, but trust me, they're lit up. Okay, but that's not all. I, I actually added more tests to the tester. Let's go ahead and test a 6264 RAM IC. Yeah, that's right. So we press the right arrow key and that selects the 6264. Press enter. And if you watch, you'll see these two LEDs here alternating. That's simply to indicate that the tester is working. And I added that in because testing the 6264 actually takes about 20 seconds and the RAM chip is good. Now you might be thinking, okay, yeah, well, what, what happens when you test a, a 6264 or any RAM C when one's not plugged in? 
Well, let's do that and find out. And it comes up red. Up next, we have a 9114 IC. And if I push the down arrow key, that configures the tester to test the 2114 or 9114 RAM ICs. And we can press enter. And the test takes a few seconds. And as you can see, it was going through each pass pretty quickly. And it came back and the RAM IC is good. That's pretty much it. Um, I guess the last thing I should mention is that I made all these changes, but kept the price of the tester exactly the same. That's pretty much it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. Take care and be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe.